Hello students, <coughs> I am Dr. Tonwai Vishwash. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry, the Mystery of Molecules. I hope you all are fine. So today we are going to discuss a method, better to say industrial method for the preparation of glycine. But in this video we will discuss industrial method as well as non-industrial method means from academic perspective also we will learn about the synthesis or preparation of glycine and importance of glycine. So today's discussion will cover few points like the importance of glycine, why it is important, why we need to prepare this. And finally, we will discuss the two main method that is chloroacetic acid method and Straker amino acid synthesis method. And after that, we will discuss few other method for academic interest to learn about synthesis of glycine. Fine. So why glycine is important? Because this is the biggest motivation to study as well as preparation of glycine. Because this, this is the structure of the molecule glycine. So this is actually the smallest amino acid. Why? Because amino acid has a general formula that is CO2H, NH2 and this is R. In this case for glycine R equal to hydrogen. That's why this is called smallest amino acid. By the way, you may think that sir, why don't we consider carbamic acid as an amino acid? Because this is actually unstable. And what happened? It undergo decomposition to produce carbon dioxide plus ammonia. This is not an ammonia acid. Okay, so please be careful. Now, actually another importance that this could be a precursor for other substituted amino acid. What do I mean? If this H could be replaced by R, then we can have other amino acid. So glycine is a potential synthons for other amino acid. Okay, and for that purpose, some dimerization is very useful. What do I mean by this dimer? Because if you use glycine, means this one, and small amount of water in glycerol, if you heat, so what happened? These undergo dimerization. Dimerization, or you may say amide formation. Why? I, I'll explain. Amide formation or better to say intramolecular amide formation. So this is actually an intramolecular amide formation and during this process what happens? Two molecules of water produced. Okay. So this is actually the dimer of glycine. Why this is important? Just look at this molecule. There are two hydrogen. Okay, and this hydrogen is alpha to this carbonyl. So if you can replace, if you can do some reaction, they could easily be replaced. And after that, do hydrolysis, you will get the substituted amino acid derivative. Okay, so fine. And we have discussed why carbonic acid is considered as the simplest. It is not considered as the simplest carb amino acid, whereas glycine is considered because gly glycine is stable. Fine. Now discuss the method that is trickle synthesis of amino acids. So what happens? In this case, first aldehyde is converted into this imine nitrile derivative under which undergo acetic hydrolysis here to produce the final acid. So this could be achieved in two ways. First way is we discuss this amine ammonium chloride could be a source of ammonia and this source of cyanide because formaldehyde you may consider that source of this middle carbon. Fine, this is from formaldehyde. But this ammonia is coming from amine and this carboxylic acid from cyanide. Okay, fine. So this, so first this ammonia can react with this formaldehyde and do ship based condensation for the removal of one molecule of water and what it produces this imine. Under acidic condition, where I am saying acidic C, this is medium is acetic acid. So, imine can be converted into iminium and after converting into iminium, it becomes more electrophilic. And second, see this is a formaldehyde derivative. So, bulkness point of view means two factor ne ne responsible for attack on carbonyl carbon. First of all, its electrophilicity, second its bulkness and this thing is governed by a topic named Bargidunis trajectory. I have already uploaded a lecture. Please visit where you can learn how the nucleophilic attack occurs on this carbon that is Burgi Burgi trajectory. Okay, fine. Now, 
we understood this so after that this will be a product now in this way we will end up amine directly but see in the reaction medium there is formaldehyde and we know formaldehyde is super electrophile because of this burgiruni's trajectory first of all there are two hydrogens which do not have any plus i effect and bulkness point of view this is minimum because they are smallest atom so these undergo ship based condition further and removal of one molecule of water ship based condensation and ultimately it will end up this and hydrolysis of this will produce final acid there could be another pathway you can argue that sir cyanide is a good nucleophile so cyanide will attack so what it will produce so ch2 cn oh fine and oh will not remain as oh because it's an acidic medium so it will be converted into oh2 plus so what can happen the produced ammonia from ammonium chloride can attack and it can leave okay i haven't shown here carbocation type mechanism because the cyanide is adjacent to the carbon so carbocation formation is difficult rather than sn2 is more favorable because the pentagonal bipyramidal intermediate where the negative charge is concentrated could be stabilized by the cyanide derivative you may consider this thing if you you can understand this thing by uh, nucleophilic substitution on alpha haloketone that could be a strategy that mechanism may help you to understand this and i have already uploaded a lecture on this you may visit for better understanding so what can happen in this way it will produce ch2 cn and nh2 because after nucleophilic attack nitrogen will bear a formal positive charge and elimination of proton will result in a neutral molecule so similar like this and second time it will undergo a reaction with formaldehyde to produce the molecule okay so in this way through sticker amino acid synthesis you can prepare glycine our point of interest fine now let's discuss the another method that is chloroacetic acid method so first of all chloroacetic acid means first acetic acid is converted used reacted with chlorine red phosphorus and this is actually using a hvz reaction i have already uploaded videos on hvz reaction you may visit if you have any difficulty in understanding fine so after that acidic work up sorry work up it will result in chloroacetic acid by the way generally alpha halogenation of carboxylic acid we prefer bromine as a reagent not chlorine why because chlorine can uh, result in unexpected beta gamma delta chlorination but see that is not possible here because this is only alpha hydrogen let no beta hydrogen is there so that's why chlorine is used it is more reactive less selective and cheaper and we are discussing industrial method for preparation so this cheap is a very very important so don't consider cheap means a very low quality and sometime we use the word cheap to say that this is a very mean minded cheap minded not that here cheap is blessings for industry so what happened alpha halo acid and reaction of alpha halo acid with ammonia resulted in amino acid and here ammonia act as a nucleophile and reaction you may consider it as sn2 type reaction and it resulted in preparation of glycine fine but if this method has a dis, uh, disadvantage which is less less yield okay so this point this less yield factor could be improved by another method that is use of this chloroacetic acid reaction with eurotropin how, why because this is actually named as hexamethylene tetramine and how this is prepared this is prepared from formaldehyde plus ammonia so you may consider this thing as a solid source of ammonia fine second these lone pairs of this hexamethylene tetramine have a directional property okay that's why that's why they are better nucleophilic compared to the ammonia so it will attack through a sn2 type process and ultimately result in quaternary ammonium species attached to this alpha uh, carbon of the carboxylic acid now after hydrolysis means this it will result in this amino acid and see the overall yield this overall yield is 90% by the way first step we have used excessive amount of ammonia and ultimately we get less yield question why we have used excess ammonia this is because first of all ammonia is a gas second we know that amination reaction may not stop at primary amine stage it may undergo secondary tertiary possible so if you use excess ammonia the so multi alkylation probability is reduced 
okay so that is the advantage why this so now question may come that's that you have explained two method one is this and second which one is better economically first one is better economically why because we are directly using ammonia okay so this is better from economically and remember industry runs by economics and economics run by profit and profit runs from profit comes from cheap methods that and that is that can also you may consider it is a advantage or positive point of a science and technology such that a particular target could be achieved under cheap methods fine fine so this is better from industrial now so we have this in this case we have discussed this chloroacetic acid method now there are some other methods also and like previous these two are industrial method this is for academic interest so if you this is actually a thalamide derivative if you react this thalamide with base like sodium hydride or sodium hydroxide it undergo the nitrogen anion formation by the way you may confuse that sir from oxygen o minus to n minus is it is it okay because nitrogen is less electronegative obviously because the corresponding negative charge or you may consider here the conjugate base is resonance stabilized by the two carbonyl so you may consider one of the canonical form it looks like this is o minus this is n this and another is this so you may consider it it will come it will come here it will come here it will open up so this nitrogen o minus so the negative charge is delocalized de over this two carbonyl and that is the reason this anion is produced because it is stabilized fine so from here we have prepared a nitrogen nucleophile but you may consider this is a anionic nucleophile okay so previously we have prepared neutral nitrogen we have used neutral nitrogen based nucleophile but in this case anionic and remember this is a nucleophilic substitution on a alpha halo ketone derivative okay so uh, that's why sn2 is better so carboxylic acid has a carbonyl group so you may consider this thing the strategy like that and by the way i have already discussed a lecture, dedicated lecture on sn2 reaction on alpha halo ketone so that could be are uh, very interesting for you to learn so after this anionic nucleophilic attack on this alpha halo acid so this derivative will produce now see the amine is not free so we need to hydrolyze these two bonds such that we can get the amine and for that purpose two choices are there one is hydroxyl heating or hydrazine okay so ultimate i'll dis discuss about this so ultimately after hydrolysis it will result in this amino acid glycine now question which method is better for hydroxyl alkali or hydrazine actually hydroxyl alkali this thing needs higher temperature or you can say drastic condition whereas hydrazine can do the reaction under milder condition question 5 so for that reason you need to understand the nucleophilicity of both through reagent hydrazine is more nucleophilic Okay, let me draw the two thing. This hydrazine is more nucleophilic. Why? Because see, this hydrazine has two adjacent lone pairs. This, and because of this lone pair lone pair repulsion, this is very active, and which is named as alpha effect. okay so consequently what happens this is more interested to attack on the carbonyl more nucleophilic so it will attack so it will open up so first stage what it will result it will result this is this is the hydrazine derivative nh nh2 now this is c this is nh and this is cwh after proton exchange now what can happen see this hydrazine has also its lone pair so it can do the intramolecular nucleophilic attack and after this it will remove so in this way it will result in amino acid means this glycine okay along with that what it will result it will result in the hydrazine this is the carbonyl this is the nh carbonyl in each this 
so that is the reason why so in a short first of all the nucleophilicity of hydrazine is responsible for attack under milder condition second point this intramolecular reaction by hydrazine is favored because it is another lone pair is remaining okay so that's why reaction happens very easily whereas hydrolysis of amide is not that much easier and it needs higher temperature which is actually which is the case for this hydroxyl alkali fine okay so so in conclusion what you have learned we have learned that glycine is the smallest amino acid with no asymmetric center point number one so not only amino acid but it's means it is not it is not only used as an amino acid but it is also a synthon for other amino acid where alkyl groups are there means alkyl aryl whatever substitution there okay so means substituted amino acid could be synthesized from glycine okay now commercially used commercially this glycine is prepared from two reaction as i told this is one is chloroacetic acid method and another is sticker amino acid synthesis so these are the main two reactions used in industry for preparation of glycine and another thing this thalamide could easily be had uh, uh, this thalamide could is not synthesized this is hydrolyzed okay so thalamide could easily be hydrolyzed by hydrazine due to its excellent nucleophilicity and second intramolecular reaction and by the way another interesting point i forget to tell during the thing that this glycine this glycine is not asymmetric this is a very interesting interesting not asymmetric why means it do not have any chiral center see there are actually two hydrogens so that's why it is not chiral so this is another important character of glycine this is non chiral okay so this is the end of this discussion i believe you have enjoyed the video if it is please press the like and write your opinion in the comment box and if you think this content is worthy then share with your friends and most importantly if you think my channel is providing good content then please subscribe my channel chemistry the mystery of molecule and please press the bell icon for regular update of my videos because i prefer to upload on a regular basis and most importantly thank you all for watching this lecture so before leaving stay happy stay blessed see you in my next video